Hey guys, we are finally beginning our coverage of Survivor 46 with the preseason power ranking. And I think this is a pretty interesting group. Now I will say that there are definitely similarities with other players from the new era, but what do you expect at this point? And I feel like the last couple of shows that I've covered on this channel have kind of humbled me when it comes to how I assess these people in the preseason. Or even though I'm still going to give my thoughts on them and give a winner pick, I'm definitely going to be taking this one with a grain of salt as I don't want to make too many assumptions. But obviously there are 18 players to talk about and let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into the video. So starting off at number 18, the person I believe is the least likely to win Survivor 46 coming into the season is Randon. Now, I think Randon is a pretty interesting prospect here, where even though he is one of the older people on the cast, he is pretty good physically, where he has run marathons and he's into sports, and he also works in aerospace, so you would assume he'd be pretty smart. However, I feel like my biggest issue with Randon is he's just kind of awkward socially, where I feel like he'll definitely have a hard time clicking with a lot of people on his tribe. Now, looking at his brief video, like he definitely comes off a bit like Bruce, where he's kind of high energy and he kind of comes off as his like dad sort of figure, which I don't think will click super well. You also have his own family who don't even have that much faith in him, where they're supposedly planning to throw a party for him when he's the first boot, which I think doesn't bode well for his chances there. The fact that even his own family doesn't have a lot of faith in him. It reminds me a bit of Wendy Jo from Nicaragua, where even her own husband told her that she would be a bit too annoying and that she needed to tone it down. And while I don't think Randy will be that annoying per se, I definitely don't have a ton of faith in him socially. I feel like he'll definitely have a hard time clicking with a lot of people there. And I feel like with him not having too much game knowledge beyond that to overcome that, I definitely worry a bit about him long term. Even though he is somewhat decent physically, I feel like I had to put him here at number 18. Now moving on to number 17, we have another person who I'm not feeling that great about coming into the season, and here we have Liz. And I think Liz is a bit of a different type compared to Randon. I feel like Liz is definitely more high energy, someone who definitely is going to go in and probably embrace the experience a bit more. But I also think Liz very much embodies what Jeff values in Survivor now in the new era, where she talks about how she likes forced fire making, that she isn't going in with a plan, that she's just going to come in completely open minded, just rely solely on her gut. And all of these are values that Jeff loves and seems to prop up. They're not actually that good for playing the game, and I very much worry about Liz being an early boot. She definitely screams out as a very high variance player. And while she has some interesting ideas in her interview, like wanting a silly sealed around, I just don't see how it's going to work out for Liz by the end of it. Even if she makes a deeper run within the game, I just don't really see her being that much of a power player by the end of it to where she would actually win. So because of that, I just don't have that much faith in Liz coming into the season, which is why she's here at number 17. Now moving on to number 16, we have another player that I just don't feel that great about coming into it. And here we have Q. And I think my main issue with Q is he just comes off as really overconfident in his interview where he talks about how he's got this game on lock. If he can make it to the final 10, he'll be good. If he can get the final seven, it's game over. And he seems to be basing this almost entirely off of his physical ability where he talks about how he's just going to win challenges. Which, considering that he is a former college football player, is definitely one of the big pros for him coming into the season. But when we look at like his approach to the game, I feel like he has a number of pretty questionable views where he talks about wanting to get his original tribe down the final four, how he wants to target people that throw challenges because he's not for that. He also admits that he doesn't understand why Jam Jam 144. And these things just make me feel like he doesn't understand the game as well as he thinks he does. And in general, he'll be in over his head, where he'll probably try to be the leader of his tribe early on, but maybe be undermined to that end. So those are things that are really holding me back from putting him higher on the list. The main reason I don't have him lower is, again, I feel like his physical ability will help him out a lot. You would assume on paper that he'd be able to get through a lot of the early game based off his physical ability, and I feel like there would definitely be people wanting to use him as a shield. So I feel like I have more faith in him to get deeper into the game compared to Randon or Liz, but I feel like he'll have such a difficult road in getting to the end based off his approach to the game, but also based off just him being a big threat to where I have him here at number 16. Now I'm moving on to number 15 and we're moving on to a pretty good string of players that I would consider to be high variants. These are players who I could very easily see being early boots, but also people who I could see doing well and cracking through but ultimately not people who I would consider as top contenders. 
But number 15, we do have Soda. And I do like Soda. I think she's a pretty fun personality and someone who I expect will be somewhat entertaining. But I do also worry that Soda will be a high variance player where she does remind me a lot of Mariah from Survivor 43, where both of them are teachers and both of them are very high energy. And while I think Soto will be a bit more active strategically compared to Mariah, I also worry that she'll be seen as a liability on her tribe early on in the challenges to where she could be taken out because of that. And also considering the amount that this cast talks about Carolyn and Jan Jan for 44, considering that season had just finished when the season was filming, I worry that these bigger personalities could be targeted due to their similarities to Carolyn and Jam Jam, which would obviously be pretty bad for Soda. But I do feel like Soda at least has some potential coming into the season, definitely more than the people that we already talked about, which is why she's here at number 15. Now moving on to number 14, we have another person who I could also see going either way, and here we have Jess. And again, Jess is another pretty zany personality. She's kind of silly and all over the place, and she is very much someone who I see as being high variance. And I feel like on a season like this, where people will have Carolina Jane Jen top of mind, I feel like that could be a liability. But I will say the main thing that I have with Jess over Soda is I think she's a bit better physically where she does talk about cycling and she does seem to be in better shape physically to where I could see her being kept around more due to her challenge strength. But again, I feel like with her personality being a pretty high variance one, one that will definitely be on top of people's minds coming into the season, I do have to leave her here at number 14. Now moving on to number 13, we have another person who I can honestly see going either way, and here we have Mariah. And I think Mariah kind of fits into this archetype of this nerdy, kind of quirky woman that we have seen in recent seasons. People like Franny from 44, even going back to Gabby from David vs. Goliath. Which, to be fair, those type of people tend to do well longevity-wise. They tend to make the merge more often than not, but they also tend to cap out around the mid-merge section, and I feel like Mariah could very well fall into that category, where she tends to peak at the final eight or so before being sniped out then, and even then, there is some worry early on that she could be sniped out if she's not pulling her way in challenges, or if she just doesn't click well with the rest of the group. So I definitely think there's a lot to be worried about with Mariah, For while she could very well make the merge, I feel like there's not a ton of upside beyond that, which is why she is here at number 13. Now moving on to number 12, and we have two players in a row that I kind of view similarly, and it was just a matter of ordering them. But number 12, I did decide to go with Charlie. And I think Charlie is a pretty interesting prospect here, in the sense that he reminds me a lot of Spencer Bledsoe, where he even compares himself to Spencer in his bio where obviously he is pretty good physically, like where he did like a lot of sports in college, but obviously he's now a law student, so you'd assume he'd be pretty intellectual. So obviously he has a lot of that going for him. Now I will say he does come off as a bit preppy in my eyes, and I feel like that could cause people to view him as being a bit of a hot shot and sort of being cocky, even though I don't necessarily think that's the case. Now, if you are looking at what he actually says is in his interview, he does seem somewhat well prepared for the show where he has been listening to podcasts and he's been practicing puzzles on Etsy. So again, he has been doing a decent amount of prep and I would expect him to come into the game with a decent amount of knowledge. Though at the same time, he also talks about how one of his biggest weaknesses is that he can be a bit too loyal. And I think that could very well dictate his game where he could find himself like navigating through the game with a fall alliance member, but then struggle to actually cut them towards the end. So I think that's a bit of a worry sign. Also in general, I feel like Charlie is someone that may not command the most respect if he were to get towards the end, which is also another worry sign. And even early on, I could see him being a bit high variant as well, where I could see him not clicking well with people on his tribe and through that he could be taken out early. So again, I do feel like there are plenty of worry signs with Charlie in my eyes, and it's that worry that leaves him here at number 12. Now moving on to number 11, and we have someone kind of similar to Charlie in my eyes, and here we have Jelinski, who I believe is the youngest person on the cast at 22. And I think Jelinski is also kind of high variance in the sense that on one hand, he could come off as kind of arrogant, kind of cocky, kind of similar to how I saw Sammy in the preseason of 43. And while Sammy obviously turned out pretty well, I think Jelinski will definitely have an uphill battle in combating perceptions of him early on. But at the same time, Jelinski does talk about being a Big Brother fan growing up. And while he had gone to Survivor more recently, he obviously has that background of watching Big Brother. So I do feel like Jelinski will be coming into this game with at least some mindset of how to approach it. 
But again, kind of similar to Charlie, I do struggle to see how Jelinski would command respect from a jury if he were to get towards the end, unless he plays his really aggressive, really effective game by the end of it. So obviously there is some wiggle room there. And I feel like with his knowledge of Big Brother and Survivor, I do feel like there is at least some upside to Jelinski. But again, I do see him as a pretty high variance player as well, which is why he's here at number 11. Now moving on to number 10, then we have someone who I did want to put higher. However, I do worry a lot about this person early on. And here we have Venus. And I do like Venus. She obviously has a very interesting background being from Iran originally, being the only current Canadian on the cast. And she does seem very intelligent as well. Now, beyond that, I do worry she could be a bit high variant. I could see her fall into this trap that we saw Claire from 44 fall into or Swati from 42, where we saw them being relatively early boots off their try due to them not connecting well with them the most. And while I don't think she's necessarily cold per se, where she even missed being a bit of a crybaby, I do worry that perception could precede her coming into the season. So I think it'll be interesting to see how she navigates through the try because of that. But again, I do feel like Venus definitely has plenty of upside, but at the same time, I do worry that she could be a relatively early boot due to how we've seen people in our archetype play in the past, which is why she's here at number 10. Now moving on to number nine, and we have someone who admittedly is also high variance, but I have a little more faith in them to get their better case scenario. And here we have Maria, who I believe is the oldest person on the cast at 48. And while that may come off as a bad thing, especially considering how she's now a parent coach, I do feel like she has a lot of life experience where she talks about doing a lot of crazy things when she was younger. She also was a salsa dancer in her youth and she even runs marathons. So she's actually surprisingly in good shape for her age. And I feel like with her like coming off pretty energetic in her interviews, I do feel like there is a strong chance that she gets her better case scenario and is less like Mariah from 42 and more like the Heidi's from 44 or Tiffany's from 41. And I feel like she could definitely integrate well within our tribe. Now, at the end of the day, I still think she has a lot of that worry that some of those players have towards the end game, where it's a question of how well she can actually navigate through the game while still having respect from a jury and whether she can truly play a cut through style game while still having that respect by the end of it. But I think on the face of it, Maria is someone who I'm actually feeling kind of OK about coming into the season, which is why I have her here at number nine. Now I'm moving on to number eight and we have someone who I definitely like a lot and I think they'll definitely endear themselves a lot to their cast. Though I do also question how much of a true contender they are. And here we have Banu. And I think Banu is a pretty interesting prospect here. He reminds me a lot of Nasir, where he obviously is originally from India, but immigrated over. Now at the same time, he admits that it's his boyfriend who got him into the show to begin with, which is actually kind of a funny trend that we see on this cast, where a decent amount of these people seem to have like partners who are bigger super fans than they are and yet for whatever reason Jeff decided to cast them over the bigger super fan what I do find pretty interesting Banu being one of them and again I think Banu will be a pretty fun presence on the show I feel like he'll definitely give off a lot of that Nasir energy to where he'll probably connect well with a lot of people on his tribe though at the same time I do find some of his takes to be kind of weird like him thinking that he'll be seen as this big physical threat, which was definitely not the vibe that I got from him coming into it. You also have him describing a lot of the cast as being full of deep thinkers and people who are younger than him, which again, wasn't fully expecting, though at the same time, he is one of the older people in the cast. But I think probably the biggest red flag in his interview was him admitting that he can't lie, which I think will definitely be a big, a big factor that will work against him later down the road. So in a lot of ways, I think he definitely has a lot of the upside of Nasir, but he also has a lot of the downside that comes with Nasir as well, to where I could see him like not getting towards the very, very end, but he's still someone who seems likable enough to where I have him here at number eight. Now moving on to number seven, and we have someone who I also like a lot, but I feel like there are a couple things holding me back from having them higher. But number seven, we do have Jem. And I think Jem is a pretty interesting prospect here. I feel like in a lot of ways, she comes off as a pretty well-rounded player, being pretty good physically, pretty good socially, pretty good strategically. And she also has a pretty interesting backstory where she is an immigrant from Guyana, which again is pretty good representation there. So in a lot of ways, there's a lot to like with Jem on paper. Now I will say the biggest red flag with her coming into it 
is she does talk about having like this list of things that she would and wouldn't do in the game, which while it's good that she is thinking things through and considering what is a good idea, it does come off as a bit limiting in my eyes. Like the fact that she says that she would never want to do these things makes me a bit worried that she may not adapt super well if things don't go her way. So I think that could be a big issue. Maybe beyond that, I mean, she does remind me a bit of Venus as well. Maybe a bit more physical than Venus, but definitely someone who, if she doesn't get like the proper like try dynamic early on, she could definitely be in trouble early on. So I think that's also a slight worry, but I think it's largely the checklist thing that she talked about that is keeping me from having her hire here. But again, she is a pretty likable person, someone who I hope does well in the season. But for now, I do have her here at number seven. Now moving on to number six, and I wasn't entirely sure what to do with this person as realistically, I could see them going either way as well. But I feel like this person has more upside than a lot of the other people we already talked about, but we do have Tevin. And initially I was a bit lower on Tevin, if I'm being honest, as I feel like in a lot of ways, he reminded me a lot of JD from 41. Kind of like this big overachiever style of person. But I feel like after reading his interview, he definitely comes off a bit more like well-rounded, a bit more humble in that regard. And I think I feel a bit better about him now, but he is definitely a very bubbly personality. I think he's someone who will click well with a lot of people on his cast. And I feel like at this point, while I said initially that I compared him to JD, I think now I am reminded a bit more of Jan Jam from 44, obviously. And I think he has a lot of potential to fill those shoes, though at the same time, considering that, as I said earlier, people have Jan Jam on the top of their minds, I do think that could work to Tevin's detriment, where he could be seen as this big bubbly person that has to be taken out right away. Though at the same time, he also has a pretty good starting tribe where he actually is on the tribe with a lot of the more high variance players as well. People like Soda, people like Randon, which I think could help him out early on to that end as well. So again, I think there's a lot to like about Tevin coming into this, but there's also plenty of warning signs as well that may not bode well for him coming into it, which is why I do have to leave him here at number six. Now moving on to number five, and kind of similar to Tevin, I did debate whether this person was too high, but I feel like this person has a lot of the pros that I mentioned with Tevin, and here we have Ben. And again, I think Ben's a pretty interesting prospect here. Now obviously the biggest similarity that you can point to here is with Cody from 43, and I think Ben is very much trying to embody that, where obviously he is coming off as a pretty laid back sort of guy, someone who is definitely going to be underestimated. And while I mentioned with Tevin that the similarity could work against him due to Tevin's similarity to, to Jam Jam, I think Ben's similarity to Cody could actually work out to his benefit, where even though Cody did do pretty well in 43, I think people kind of see him as the lesser player compared to Jesse from that season, and I think even, we even see that now in the preseason assessments where people are describing him as looking like Abraham Lincoln. And we even had Jelinski describing him as being pretty malleable. Obviously, Cody is someone who is seen as like this overly loyal type of guy, someone that Jesse was able to blindside by the end of it. And I think with that similarity there, I think that could lead to Ben being underestimated while still having a lot of the upside that Cody had. So I think that'll definitely play Duke Ben's benefit and a big reason why I have him as high as he is. But again, I feel like the top four are probably more conventional contenders in my eyes, people who I just feel better about coming into the season, which is why I have him here at number five. Now moving on to number four, and I kind of can't believe this person is this high, but considering the rest of the contenders, I did decide to go with Tim Spicer here at number four. And Tim was obviously a pretty fun character to see in his interview as well. He actually reminds me a lot of Danny from 44, where he seems pretty high energy and someone who wants to be like a leader for his tribe. And considering his background as a college coach and considering he talked a lot about his accomplishments, I could very well see him filling that role. Though obviously at the same time, a big downside to that is that he could very well be targeted after the merge. And that was definitely something that I considered to a degree when deciding to put him on this list. But I feel like compared to the others, I feel like he's probably likely to make the merge. And I feel like at that point, he is definitely someone who could be taken deeper into the game as a meat shield. Definitely someone who can build a lot of bonds through his experience as a coach. And he is definitely someone who seems pretty well equipped to get through the early game, which is a big reason I have him here at number four. Now moving on to number three, and I very much debated these top three as I feel like they each have different pros and cons going for them. But number three, I did decide to go with Tiffany. 
And I actually really like Tiffany. I found her to be a lot of fun in her interview. And I think she definitely has a lot of potential to connect well with people on the season. She definitely seems someone that understands emotional intelligence and someone who definitely seems like a pleasant person to be around. And she's also someone who I don't think will be targeted early on as I feel like she is someone who seems like she'll get to the merge all right. Now, with that said, I do have a couple of hesitations with her. I feel like for one, she does talk a lot about like not being good at resisting temptation, that she's a bit of a gambler. So I feel like she's definitely prone to some like pretty active gameplay, but also like gameplay that could backfire against her. So I do worry about that to a degree. She also talks about not having a filter, which is also something. And in general, she is someone who, while she has a lot of potential coming into the season, I feel like there wasn't like anything that truly elevated her strategically in my eyes to where I would have her as the top contender. But again, there's still a lot to like with Tiffany. I feel like she's someone who will do very well across the season, which is why she's here at number three. Now moving on to number two, and I definitely debate this one as well, but at number two, I did decide to go with Kenzie. And the thing about Kenzie is she obviously is very similar in her occupation to Frankie, who I had as my winner pick for Australian Survivor Titans vs. Rebels. And I guess this is a bit of a spoiler for that season. Frankie was the first boot on that season. So obviously now like I'm left with Kenzie, who is obviously a salon owner, just like Frankie. And I said in that video that being a salon owner was generally a good indication of one's social skills as obviously one needs to have good business sense in order to run a business like that. And one needs to have good social skills. And I think Kenzie definitely has that. She definitely talks a lot about that in her interviews. And I think she definitely comes off as someone who will definitely vibe well with a lot of people on her tribe. And even beyond this, you have other people specifically talking about connecting well with her in their interviews, where she seems to be having a lot of good first impressions. And I think that will definitely carry over into the actual season. So I think there's actually a lot to like about Kenzie. And even though I was wrong about Frankie due to their similar backgrounds, I think Kenzie definitely fits the mold a bit more. And I feel like with us having more information about how she's coming off to other people, I think I'm a bit more confident in having her this high despite my bad track record. Now at the end of the day, there's definitely still a world where she could be an early boot. I mean, considering my track record and precedence and power rankings, it wouldn't shock me if she's seen as his weakness early on. So I think that was enough to keep her from being my actual winner pick. But I think there's enough to like about Kenzie to where I have her here at number two. And now at number one, my winner pick going into Survivor 46 is Hunter. The first Hunter we have seen on Survivor since Marquesas over 20 years ago. And I do like Hunter a lot. I think he is a very interesting prospect coming into it. Now, I will say the one downside to him is he does seem to be one of the bigger, more physical guys on the cast. And I do feel like that could be an issue for him down the road due to him being seen as his big physical threat. But he is obviously a big fan of the show. He's someone who, like Kenzie, has definitely get rubbed off well on a lot of people. People have specifically cited him in their interviews as someone they want to work with. And again, he is someone who knows the show pretty well. He's a pretty massive super fan. He even runs Survivor seasons with his students due to him being a teacher. And in a lot of ways, he does remind me a bit of Tommy from Island of the Idols. And I feel like he de could definitely have that trajectory for him coming into it. So again, I do feel like Hunter is someone who I'm looking at pretty highly here. And outside of his blatant physical strength, I feel like he is someone who can definitely make the merge pretty easily. He's someone who I don't think is as high variance compared to Kenzie. And again, he has a lot of the upside to Kenzie while having not as much as the downside which is a big reason why I have him here at number one. And there we go. That'll do it for this week's video. If you like this content, be sure to like and subscribe. It really helps with the channel. Now I'll be back again next week after the season has started. So we'll get to see just how good these reads are. So we'll see there. And obviously I'm covering other shows like Australian Survivor, The Traders, and soon Big Brother Canada. So you can look forward to that. I am on Patreon now. So if you want to consider supporting the channel, you can do so by clicking the link in the description. And you can also join the Discord server by also clicking the link in the description. There's a lot of stuff coming your way. But for now, that is the video. See ya.